Hey guys, it is Ascension Angel here and welcome to my first ever tutorial video. So in this video, we are going to be taking this, the Nerf Limited M41A Pulse Rifle, and turning it into this. Now, the first thing, before we get on, I'm going to show you what you need, because we've got two stages here, which is actually modifying the uh, product itself, and then, of course, we've got to prime it and paint it. So, this is going to be a two-stage video. Uh, this video is going to be modifying this and the internal workings. We're going to, you know, sort out the triggers, which I've already done. Um, I will, you know, refer to my previous video um, on actually sorting out the uh, locking problem with the trigger so you can fire on its own as well as carving out the inside we're also going to be doing and this is specific for this tutorial because it's something i want to do personally in mind is we're going to be giving it a pullback spring-loaded cocking mechanism that is actually just going to spring back and we're going to make it so that it doesn't affect any of the internals it's just a cosmetic pullback um, because you can pump the pump you can pull the trigger and you can of course take the mag out so why not add a cocking mechanism to complete all the working functions so Here's what you're going to need to modify the entire gun and the cocking mechanism and, you know, get it ready for painting. So, for modifying this in this first part of the tutorial, you're going to need the following things. Super glue, doesn't matter which brand you use, any super glue will do, just as long as it's high quality. The Loctite Plastic Bonding System Activator Pen, because the M41A Pulse Rifle, like a lot of Hasbro products, will be made out of polypropylene, and polypropylene does not stick well with superglue. This, however, primes the plastic and enables superglue to bond things to it, and this is an essential component of this modification. You will also need X-Acto knives of various sizes, ranging from large to medium to small, and the various blades as well. You will also need sandpaper of various grits, going from very coarse grits all the way to a very fine grit, and some emery cloth as well. This will be helpful. You may need pliers and a pair of clippers, and you will also need a drill. Unfortunately, I don't have a drill, so I'm going to have to resort to other methods, which I am not showing you because it's just embarrassing, and I don't want you guys copying my dickhead methods and screwing something up. You will also need a piece of pipe. Now, I'm going to be using a piece of copper pipe just because, well, I have this lying around, and I might as well use it. Uh, you will also need a saw as well, um, a hacksaw or just a, a, a saw good enough to cut this um, because it's going to be needed for here as this copper pipe is just the right size for that, uh, which is good. Now, you will also need a roofing nail, preferably one like this and you will also need one of these surgical masks i know it sounds completely freaking ridiculous but we need it for the elastic strap as this is very important for the cocking mechanism as previously i tried a rubber band and it broke this however does not break and this is essential for the cocking mechanism you will also need milliputs this is a two-part epoxy putty, and as you can see, pause it right there if you want to read it. But I can assure you this is a key component to making this thing look fucking amazing. And the final thing you will need is screwdrivers, because otherwise, how else are you going to disassemble this? So with that, let's get on to it. Right, now there is one thing. Before we get straight onto it, I am going to show you what you're going to need to paint this thing, simply because once we've started the and finished the modding, it's going to be an immediate case of getting straight onto the painting. Why? Because some of the pieces have to be painted on the inside before everything else can get assembled together. Otherwise, you'll be seeing white on the inside. So with that, let's get straight onto what you need for, to take the M41 Impulse Rifle from looking like a garish, taxi, uh, power loader, colour scheme-ish Nerf gun and make it look like a prop that was straight out of the film. 
Right. This is where we talk about paints. So, when you've finished painting the pulse rifle, you're going to need this. This is a Winsor Newton Professional Satin Varnish. Uh, you could go with a matte varnish if you want, but I chose satin as it's a little bit more fancy. Do not go with a gloss varnish, it will make it look stupid. Um, this is very good. This only comes off with solvents such as white spirit or turpentine. It's very strong stuff and uh, it will seal it all as we do need to use some acrylic based sprays on this. So this is a good quality finish. Now, the next thing is some enamel paints. We have here uh, three pots of enamel paints from Humbrol. Now you can use acrylics, it's perfectly fine because we're sealing it with a finish. Um, so we have here metallic 53, which is good metal. We have a metallic 11, which is silver. And then we have a matte 33, which is black. Now these three combined together create the weathering effect. So some parts we're going to be painting with this, then thinning down, then washing with this, creating a wash out of this and some white spirit uh, to make a thin black put it on top of that, to darken that, and then we silver dry brush this. Other parts of the gun uh, will be a mixture of these two dry brushed all over and then a little hint of this dry brushed on afterwards to give it a nice weathered effect. Now, if you are using enamel paints, you will need white spirit to wash your brushes and to clean them. As you can see, it says cleans brushes and paint spills and it thins solvents and oil-based paints. This plus whatever oil, whatever color of enamel you're using will make a wash, which is great stuff. And it also cleans your brushes. Now, the important thing for this is not one, but two cans of Citadel Color Chaos Black Primer. I can't stress enough how fucking good this primer is. It's a very important uh, component for the, for the painting and you're gonna need two cans because uh, I managed to finish it with this one on its last leg. This one has ran out. This one has a little bit left in it, but you will need two. The best thing about this primer is it dries in 15 minutes. So it is an incredible, incredible primer. Now, the shroud, you do have a couple options. If you're going for the prop accurate version, you will need a spray of brown bess. But due to the fact that it looks olive green in Aliens, the mo in the movie, due to the heavy blue hue of the sets and the footage and whatnot, um, it ended up coming across as an olive green. So I have here a Humbrol acrylic spray, uh, light olive 86. Now I did run out of this near to the end. So when it came to painting up the screw holes, I had to use these two Citadel paints, which is uh, Deathworld Forest. So a big blob of this mixed with a tiny blob of Castilian Green to create that color there. It matched perfectly. So these two are needed if you are using the uh, acrylic spray. Um, if you are doing the Alien 3 version of the Pulse Rifle, you're just gonna need this. You don't need to worry about brown bass or green or whatnot. Now, if you're going for a wooden finish on the handle, you will need dryad bark as a base. Then you will need uh, Kislev flesh to dry brush over to give it the wood grain effect. And then you will need Rakesh Land Flesh Shade. This is a brown wash and you need four coats of this on to darken this enough so that it then makes it look like wood, like actual wood rather than just wood with flesh dry brushed over all over it. Uh, if you're going for a black handle, you don't have to worry. Um, you just, you know, have it sprayed black and then you just dry brush it with these. So that's the paints. Now let's get on to the modifications. Terribly sorry, quick editing note before we do, you will need a brush like this. This is a hog hair um, Maestro 8, size 8 flat brush. And this is very important for the dry brushing on the pulse rifle. It's very, very important. You can use other brushes as well. Um, I do recommend some softer ones like this, as you're gonna need to, if you do run out of olive spray, you may need to do some mixing with these two, and you, well, you're gonna need this to paint over the screw holes. Now, let's get on to the modding. Right, now the first step with this is to do some disassembly. Um, we're gonna be doing a couple things at once here. So we need to disassemble this. Now I have disassembled this previously in my previous video for sorting out the triggers. Now this yellow shroud here will completely come off into halves. So you need to get that off, but do be careful because on this side, there are some electronics and a speaker stored. So I will unscrew this and you don't have to actually remove the battery compartment to take this entire half off. Uh, I will unscrew that and then I will show you what it looks like. With the shroud now fully unscrewed, you can remove this yellow half, and here's what we have. 
Now this yellow half at the back will come out. So I will remove the magazine. The batteries do not have to be removed for this. Um, however, I am going to just very carefully remove this right here. Because I want to show you how you can do it without damaging this. You've got to be very, very careful because someone actually, uh, on the tutorial, they accidentally broke a wire. Luckily, they were able to resolder it, but still. So you just, when you are manipulating pieces, just take your time, go nice and carefully. And as you can see, this is all now coming out. Again, just taking your time. You have to be very careful here. I don't want to damage anything. And here, right here, is the speaker. So you need to unscrew that. You also need to unscrew these as this is the um, circuit for the ammo counter and you will want to put the screws somewhere. Um, I recommend having one pot for the screws for the shroud, which I'm going to use one with a silver handles. And then for the actual main body, which I'm spraying black, I have one with black handles, funny enough. I'm going to get a little bag to put the screws in for these because I don't want to lose them um, and I don't want to make any screw ups with this as this was quite an expensive piece uh, to buy. So once I've got all this unscrewed, we're going to move on to this. Now with everything removed, and I do want to say as well, um, these two little buttons which are for the uh, adjusting the ammo counter, they will need to come out and this as well, which is part of the mag release. Now. There's one thing I do want to specify here. There are three sets of screws. So we have these long ones here, which are the shroud screws. We have the ones that hold the main unit together. And then we have these little ones right here. These little ones are all the same length and they are what hold in the buttons and the chip that goes across. The chip for the ammo counter they also hold in this orange piece of plastic with the speaker, and they do also hold in the um, this piece, which holds the uh, you know the mag release in. You will want to keep those separately um, from everything else. I may because I did remember watching one tour and one guy did make a mistake of uh, putting screws in too long, and they ended up puncturing the other side. You don't want that. So and they, so you need to keep all the screws separate to avoid confusion. I do recommend putting these um, in here as well for the time being, just so you don't lose them. Now, with that aside, we need to get onto this. And I will, st must stress, with, with removing the electronics, be extremely gentle. They will come, but you just need to be very gentle and not pull like that. Just be gent gentle wiggling and they will come out. And as you can clearly see, everything is all here. Now what we need to do is carefully flip this over. Oh. And if I put the mag in, as you can see, the ammo counter still lights. And if I pull the trigger, it still works. I'm keeping the batteries in so I can test it as I go to make sure everything works fine. Uh, the pump obviously still works. Now we need to get this entire piece off. Now with the pump, you will need to pump it back to get access. So if I do it right now, there's a screw right there. You need to unscrew that, pump it forward, release the trigger, and then unscrew everything else. And you'll end up left with this. Now with the shroud off, we can see how everything works. Now I'm gonna tell you how this bit works right here because this is a key thing here. The reason the clicking happens, regardless of whether you stop the flywheels or not, is because of this mechanism right here. That button right there is what makes the pulse rifle sound and this is constantly hitting it as well as feeding the darts into the flywheels to go out. So if I press this, That is how that works, and that's how it's an automatic gun. And when the flywheels are active, this is then pushing darts into the flywheel system, which then flings them out. So that is essentially how this works. Now, I'm going to show you this right here. And this is a key thing. So make sure you get a screen grab of this. And make sure you get a screen grab 
of this because we're going to take all this out and this is you're going to need to reassemble this you're going to need to put these back in and this is how it is going to go so with that in mind i'm going to take all this out and show you what we have left just this area i'll take a few of these pieces out as well because they'll get loose they'll juttle all over the place uh, but all this is going to come out here so i will do that and we'll be back in a second now, I have decided to remove the flywheel system from here because there's one more thing I forgot that we're going to do, which is get out these and make these hollow. Now, the pump pieces are also screwed in by these two right in here and right there in here. Once you unscrew those two screws, and I've kept those there for the flywheels, even though they are the same as those two. And um, once that's done, I will show you this side. This is where you want to drill to drill in the corners here and then carve everything out with a knife on all these little ridged areas. Not this one, just these ones here. Just these ones. And the same on that side. I will do it and then show you what I've got and then we can get on to the next step. And uh, as you can see, and it's jammed there. Um, once I sculpt the piece for the end and then put it back, as you can see, it will not stick. It will just go all the way to there, almost to the end, and then back again. And it's tied around here as well. I made a, a little carving away right here, fed it through there, tied it around here, and it is a much better system now. Um, it's almost flawless. It just needs a bit of sculpting on here that will stop it from jiggling about like that. And uh, yeah. And the electronics all still work as well, which is great. So as you can see, I have got all these bits carved out. And I've also worked in the cocking mechanism. I cut this section out here, which I've got blue tack in for the moment because I'm going to take it outside and paint it in a minute. Um, I have a roofing nail in here and it is tied to an elastic strap, which is tied around here. And then I've got a copper pipe and some milliput to make the cocking mechanism. So when I pull this back to here, it will spring back. And it also does it when it's fully assembled because I have tested it. Now, before we take this outside and spray it, uh, there are a few things we need to do. We need to sand off the this, um, this striping here because this unfortunately is raised and it will show up in the final result and it will cause problems. And there are also a few mold holes. Um, there is at least one here. So you need to get some milliput and sand those off. As you can see, I've um, got the, uh, the part of the shroud done and you need these need sanding uh, off. So you need to fill these with milliput, sand them off so they're nice and smooth. Uh, and then you can take it outside and spray it and the same also goes with the shroud as well you need to actually sand off the the um the paint job um i already sprayed some of the some of it already uh but you need to sand off this factory paint because it is like i said it is raised and it will show up and it will ruin the look of the gun and uh we are going to tape off some of these areas as well to protect the electronics and I'll show you how to do that when we're out in, in a minute. But you need to sand all this off. Start with a uh, rough sandpaper, then keep going to at the uh, you know the smoothest, so it's nice and smooth, and you wouldn't even know it's been sanded. Now, with the piece fully masked up um, around the areas where it could possibly get near the flywheel system, where I place my elastic strap for the cocking mechanism around here, because this is where the mechanism for the um, the dart feeder goes into and also where the electronics are i put them in a bag and i even take the bag up and what i've done with the other side is because with all these hollow bits you're gonna be able to see the inside so i'm actually gonna spray this black so that you don't see any white through these gaps i've taped off the entire flywheel assembly i'm not bothered with this because the paint's only going across here on the inside um but once that's done it is time to prime all right i have uh, a flashlight on my torch because it's getting a little dark in here. I've got the primer and now Now I flipped it over. Oh. <laughs> 
and we will leave that for uh, 15 20 minutes and it will be touch dry for priming the magazine it's exactly the same process as is the same with the shroud Right, now once the inside has dried, I highly, highly recommend sealing it with the satin varnish, which is what I'm doing right now, as you can see. That way, it's just one less thing to do when it comes to finally assembling it. Um, it's one less thing you'll have to worry about. So I'm going to let this dry for a while now, probably overnight, and when I come back in the morning, this will all be in a satin finish while the outside will be a matte finish and tomorrow we will get working on painting the rest of it now that everything has been primed ready to go right so once you have primed all the pieces so they look uniform and black with the exception of the pump because that's already black we're gonna basically do some weathering now i've already got a mix of gunmetal and black here and traditionally, um, if the whole piece has been painted in gunmetal like this, I will then put a black wash on it. But because this is sprayed and we're only doing uh, some chipping on it, you can't really put a black wash on it without it sticking up on this like a sore thumb. So essentially, once you've got your gunmetal, you, know, you just stick your brush on it like that, which this is mixed with black, like I said, so I don't have to make the wash. You do that and then you just flick it on the edges like that and uh, I'm going to do it a little bit more but you don't have to copy me exactly this is just so you do it like this continuously until you've got the amount of weathering you want and this will be the same on all the pieces including the magazine and the shroud as well so I will show you what I've got done when I finished okay so I would like to show one quick thing um, before we get on to the next stage of painting which is the reason why I'm putting on the silver. Now, as you can see, um, this side here uh, just has the gunmetal edging on it, but this side has gunmetal, and as you can see, it's a little bit brighter because it has silver on the edges. And if I show you here the differences between the two halves of the pump, just gunmetal, and then gunmetal with a subtle bit of silver on the edges um, and as you can see this piece looks much nicer than just this on its own and even if this was just silver and not gunmetal this looks a lot better because as you can see the gunmetal is there and it adds some depth as well which is why I you know then put a little bit of silver on because if I show you half of the mag, the mag here I've done this half with the silver and gunmetal and just this half with gunmetal you can see the major difference it not only makes it look weathered, but whether this just looks like the paint has been stripped off the actual metal, this actually looks like the metal has seen some slight damage and wear as well. And it just really adds to the depth and realism of a real used and abused prop. So I highly recommend this technique. Um, it, it is amazing. Like I said, just gunmetal and black, wisp it, and then when you're done, just little hints of silver on the edge, a subtle bit of silver, and it really, really brings it to life. And this is gonna be exact same with the shroud, which we will get into after we've done the handle. I've gotta now flick these up with silver, touch this up, touch this up, and uh, once that is done, you know, we're gonna get straight onto the handle. So let's get to the handle. Okay, now if you're doing a wooden handle, the first thing you need to do is mask everything off. Even if you are a very, very, very steady painter, I recommend masking everything off because if it, even the slightest bit goes over, you're gonna have to just respray the whole thing. If you uh, you can't just hand paint a bit of a bit of matte black over this because it will stick out and it will look hand painted as opposed to the spray. It it will do. Um, I I've tried it before on something and even when covering it with a clear gloss. It doesn't stick out as much, but it is still there. So 
this has to be taped off this has to be taped off and all the surrounding areas so that just this handle is done again if you're doing a black handle it's easy just add some weathering and that's it but i'm going to show you how to do a wooden handle so let's take this off now one thing i do want to quickly note is this here this pattern right here now it's very easy to get you just take the end of a paintbrush or use your fingernail or whatever and just run it along until you find the lines that way when you're going with a knife per se you can very easily just cut around here pull this area off and then it'll look like this there we go see all nice looking doesn't matter if there's a bit of scratching here from when we cut with a knife because you know we just take our brush dip it in the uh the dryad bark which this is the one and then you know just go over it like so might take a, one or two coats but once it's done you know it's going to look like this now that the dried bark has dried you just need to get some kisler flesh on your brush which as you can see and if i just very very carefully hold this like so we can just Wisp it across to kind of try and create a worn wood grain effect. And as you can see, it actually looks really good. Not perfect, but it's pretty good. Once this is dried, you're then going to need to put four coats of this on because each coat will darken the Kisla flesh and make it look more like wood grain. I've tried this before, it does work. Now that that is dry, it's time to apply the brown wash. Not too much around these areas, you don't want it bleeding because it could go under the tape here. But, um. As you can see, it's working fairly well. My brush isn't quite super duper uh, clean, it's probably still got a bit of white spirit on it, which is why it's acting a bit odd but one coat is already darkening it and uh you know once we put four on in total it will be like the kisler flesh will be really dark and actually look like a wood color so if you do this four times you're on for success right now this is something really quickly i just want to show you before we get to the next step now here is the other side of the gun with the cocking mechanism and i've done the handle as you can see with the wood grain effect now that's what it looks like without the four coats of brown wash here is the other one with the four coats of brown wash and as you can see very very different looking the kislev flesh actually blends in better and looks like another shade of the wood now i'm going to remove this tape here because i do believe some of the wash mice have bled underneath hopefully it hasn't it doesn't seem to have so far but if it has, then I will have to do some respraying. Let's see if I can get this off on camera. And the masking tape does just come away really easily. And as you can see, it's not taking the paint with it at all. And luckily, that has been a rip-roaring success. And none of the uh, wash got underneath. Because as you can see, it bled onto the tape. But it seems that the uh, tape has soaked it all up. And it might be a little bit there, but that's not so big of a deal. And that looks absolutely fantastic. And now all we need to do is satin finish the entire thing. Now, this is why I said earlier in the video to do the underside because, you know, get that out of the way because it just makes it a heck of a lot easier. We'll be taking care of that as well later on because we also have to fill in the screw holes. So you grab your satin spray and you blast this thing like so again not too much then we'll just turn that around really quickly and get some of those areas that we couldn't get before like these again because this has been sprayed in acrylic even though it's been painted with enamel the acrylic could still chip off so and even the enamel could chip off to, uh, you know, to an extent. So it's best to seal everything, um, as this will only come off with solvents. And this will make a very strong, very resistant, and very durable finish, which will result in little to no paint chipping 
if any paint chipping at all. And it also results in it having a nice satin look as well, which uh, I think really adds to the look of it. Now, working on the other side is pretty much the same principle, but because we've got the cocking mechanism, the charging handle, whatever you're going to call it here, you just, it's just, you know, this around the edges. That's pretty much it. Move the bolt out the way as well. Um, mine is going to stick a little bit, which is fine. It actually kind of helps. Um, and just add the weathering all around. And uh, do the same with the rest of the gun and uh, the handle in the same way if you want. And then you're good to, and then you're good to go for the next step. Now let's not forget as well that the bolts here also need a bit of dry brushing. So, you know, just do that as well. Flicking the brush across like so. And then going down as well, just to, again, give it that worn up and used look and it will fit in with the rest of the gun nicely. And also, this needs to be painted silver as well. This needs to be done all silver. I left the uh, screw there, I carefully dry brushed around that with the gun metal, with, uh, with silver on top of the gun metal, and I painted around this very carefully. Um, you can sand the Aliens logo if you off if you want to. I'm just, I assume most of you will. I chose to keep it on because that's just me. But uh, don't forget, this needs to be painted silver. Right, so now that all that is done, we can start working on the shroud. Now it's a little bit different here because we have to do something first. We can't just simply spray paint it green or brown. We could do, but I'm gonna do something else. I'm gonna show you how to do it and it will make it a lot easier. Now all these faux cap screws here, which are located around various parts of the gun, we're gonna paint in gun metal. And there's a reason for this. I mean, besides the fact that they're meant to be. Now it doesn't matter if it's neat or not because you'll see you'll see when we're done that it is not going to matter so we paint all of them i'll show you them all on the camera because there are a fair few as you can see there's one right there well half of one so we just dab some gun metal and we also have some half ones right here and these are the ones i want to show you because these are very very small as you can see so again just gun metal provided I don't knock things over um, and we also have two right here so once they are done it will look something like this right now that the gun metal on the shroud has dried it's time to create the black wash which is very easy you just take some black paint here maybe a little more like so and then you dip the brush in the white spirit and you mix that all in maybe add a bit more black as well and then make sure there's not too much on the brush you just go over it like this as you can see Now the reason we do that is because it actually makes it look darker, more like actual gunmetal dark. And when it comes to dry brushing the silver on, it, the silver will stand out more. And if, as you can see, the top half does not have any black wash on it. The bottom half, as you can see, does, and it just looks a lot better. So once that is done, uh, you know, with especially these bits right here, it's then time to dry brush the silver on. And now that the black wash has dried, we can take our silver brush with a little bit, our brush with a little bit of silver paint, and just go over the edges, as you can see, and also the inside as well. And the beauty of dry brushing is it don't have to be neat or uniform because it's, you know, with this at least, it's meant to be worn and scuffed, the opposite of neat and tidy. So. You know, if you wanted to, you could just make it an absolute weathered mess. Uh, you know, just wisp silver everywhere, um, and it would still look good. Um, you can see, like that. And then we also have these bits to do. So, if I prop this up with one hand, just 
just gently go over them. I apologize for the focus being off, like so. And then the other side. You can see the difference here, the gun metal here and then the black wash, it really makes a difference. And as we dry brush the silver on, it really just brings it to life. Now all we have to do is let this dry and it is time to spray the olive green. Right, now that these areas have been all taped off, including these little ones right here, it's now time to spray it with the olive. Now, this is where you're gonna do this bit first because then when you flip it over, it'll make it a lot easier. Um, and this is trying to get everything done in one go. So just like that. You can also do these bits as well and some there, just to ease things off a bit. And then here as well. Don't forget in there, it's an important bit. And then we'll just flip the entire thing over. And they've got a little bit of mess there, it's not a big deal, it'll settle itself out. And then just work on the rest of it. Like that. So just quickly, and then once you do that, you know, just flip it around. Uh, like that, put something like this in here and just flip it around like so and uh, get that bit done then put it outside and give it at least 20 minutes to half an hour to dry and then it's the next step. Now before we get on to weathering the shroud I do want to discuss one quick thing that this is purely optional if you want real extra detail and realism is the internal parts of the magazine uh, release and the magazine well. Um, I'm going to spray these black and then do the weathering again the same way as I've done with everything else because I don't want yellow being visible. So it's literally just as simple as that. Making sure everything is coated so that there is no yellow visible. And again, tape everywhere off. Unfortunately, I'm starting to run out of primer, but I will be able to get this finished and we'll come back when that's all done. Now that the black primer has dried, you're just going to do the same thing with the dark gun metal and go along these edges because where the magazine has been going in, you're going to want to make it look like it has scraped the shit out of the inside. And uh, you will also want to remove the tape off the bottom and do the edging along here as well. With the brush going this way, um, it will help tremendously. And that is also going to be done the same with this side. So that that way, when you have finished, you end up with something looking like this. So with this now fully done after adding the silver, along with the uh, magazine pieces. It's time to seal it. I also highly, highly recommend that you also paint the internal parts for the pump action uh, grenade launcher because these are bright bloody orange and with all those little bits we cut out of the uh, barrel shroud, these will stick out like a sore thumb and it will destroy the look of it. So I have done these as well as you were seeing, as you saw. But I, again, I can't stress enough, do these. There's only one piece I've not done because that's grey and that'll blend in better and it's the part that goes in here and that needs to stay unpainted because it'll screw up the whole mechanism otherwise. But I can't stress enough, these pieces have got to be done as well, otherwise it'll just wreck the look of the gun. So again, you know, it's just the clear coat and then just placing outside in the sun to dry for 20 minutes to half an hour and then, and then after that, we can get everything inside and start putting this beast back together. Right, so when it comes to the reassembly of the pulse rifle, this is where things can get a little bit on the tricky side because we have all this to work with here and then we're gonna fit all the wiring and stuff back in here, which I did have to do an emergency solder job right there and on there with some paperclip wire because the wires did break. That being said, it's still doable. I've done it a few times now. So the first thing we need to do 
is take the pump, take the screw out of here and then fit it into place like so, and then screw that in. Once you've screwed in the part of the pump, which will allow it to slide, you next need this piece. This piece has to fit right here and go into place like so. With this piece now in place, we can now get to work on taking this piece right here and this piece right here and feeding them in. Now, once that is in place, this is where the particularly tricky bit comes in. We have to pull the spring and fit all this into place. That has to go in that slot, but the spring has to go right there. If that jumps past there, the whole pump system will jam up and it will cause an absolute hell. And then this pops in like so. And then this piece, as I was saying, the next piece is this. This just fits right in there and goes like so. It's a little stiff. Now, here's where things get a bit tricky. Ish. This bit right here, this needs to be pushed out the way and that needs to be down like that. Then we can take this, slide that through like that and then line it all up nicely. Now don't push this down yet because that is when this piece comes in like so. And now things start to get a little tight. All right, so uh, I just have to take a few seconds to get it in because this piece, this specific end piece does get a little tight and these Pegs have now become quite tight because of the fact they've been sprayed. The next we can work on is this. And this is where things get a bit mental because we've got all this to contend with and we have to be exceptionally careful not to break things like I already did and then have to do emergency repairs. So we'll start with this blue wire and just get that into this little cavity right here. We'll then take this piece, which is, if you can see what I'm doing, which is the, um, the, main, the circuit board here, and we'll pop it into position like so. And this wire, this blackened red wire, has to go in this little cavity also. Now, this is the switch for the pulse rifle sound. So this has to get the wires out of the way, it has to go, the grey wire is going to go down there. And then this has to go into here like so. Now I do apologise for having to do that off camera, it does get a little fiddly and I did have to carefully remove the circuit board and put this green wire underneath it. The next thing that goes into place is this and this goes in this orientation and just fits in like so. The next is these. Now this one, I'll just get these out of the way in a minute. This one here connected to these two orange leads goes around there and snakes its way, fits right there and sits here. And there's a little bit right there that it goes into. And this is what activates the flywheel. Now, this one here is the trigger one. That one goes there. This one then comes through here. Just get that like so. And this one then just sits right there. And just tuck all these wires in carefully. And that is essentially all the wiring um, sorted out. You've got all the wires ready, just make sure to pull them and make sure they all fit right tightly in there and make sure none of them get in front of that hole right there because that hole is very, very important. And then we can take the trigger pieces. This is the part for the mag. And this one goes right here. And then this one goes right there. And then we'll take this one, like so, and just pop that there. And that's what 
pushes that down to activate the firewall. And then this one, like so. Now, please don't be a doofus like me and almost forget this part. This part fits right in here and is very important. Otherwise, the entire rifle will just... <laughs> yeah, it's not going to look great. So don't forget this piece. As you can see, it just fits right in there. Make sure everything is pushed in all the way. And, uh, you know, it should look... Don't worry about if this sticks out a little bit. Because when we put this on, it's going to all fit nicely. Just make sure everything else is in place. All this and whatnot. Make sure that's all in there. Because otherwise you'll have problems. And then just take the shroud piece. Sorry, not shroud. The outer side. And just force it down uh, carefully though. Just press everything into place. Then screw it together. Now with the internal Thompson um, part assembled, we'll just pop the mag right in and just test the electronics. And we'll test the pump, which this is why I painted everything. You can very clearly see the gun metal parts that we've done. If we didn't do those, they'd be bright orange and it would look awful. So we'll... It's very stiff now, more like the actual grenade launcher. It's not quite easy to do it one-handed. So pop it and then still works nicely. And uh, yeah, so all we need to do now is get uh, this half of the shroud and pop the rifle on top. So give me a sec and I'll do that. And don't forget as well the stock piece and the magazine catch. So for the magazine catch, we'll take our button piece and it's keyed. So the corners, the flat 90 degree corners go at the bottom and the curved part goes at the top, like so. Might be a little bit stiff because of the paint. We'll next take the spring piece and we'll just pop that right there. Then we'll take this other piece. I apologize for how crudely I'm doing everything at the moment, it's all one-handed. And this piece goes right in there, like so. Then this piece goes on top and you just screw that in place. With the stock fitted in and this all screwed in, we can now take the main body. And what we're going to do, very gently, we have to be very gentle here, gentle like it's a dog, take that. And what we're also going to do at the same time, just to make things a little easier in terms of the, um, the buttons here, is feed the magazine in. And that will give you the 10. Now, if we press one of these buttons, you can see it's going down. So this, and I just realized it has a fitting system there, goes here. But we can't just simply screw that on because we have the buttons, which is luckily I, you know, kept them safe and bleed tacked them. So these just fit right in here, like so. And then this, with that little notch, goes right into that piece of plastic, which is very clever of the designers. So that gets screwed in. And then, with that now done, it's time to do the ammo counter. So we'll just press the buttons. And uh, that way I know the number. Well, more just so I get in the right direction. And it fits right into there. So let's screw that into place. Now, once that's screwed in, the speaker is pretty easy, really. Just as long as you can maneuver everything, get into place. You're going to pop it down in there. And you've got a little notch right there that's going to fit into any one of these, preferably this one. And then this is going to go on top with that peg facing the top. And you're going to screw it down like so. Now, with that being done, carefully just raise the main rifle over. Now we've just got to fit all this in. So this right here is gonna, you know, wood. It wasn't for the fact that the, you know, tape is faffed up. Uh, it would tape into there, but it won't do because the, um, the tape's kind of manky. So this, you're gonna just carefully move it up, very gently, very, very gently. Get this little bit right here out of the way. 
try to show this on camera. And this, if I can get the little bit, this little bit right here, sorry the focus is a bit off, this little bit with that hole is going to go right into there. Now, a quick thing, if you do have to happen, you happen to have your wires tangled, these three right here unclip from here, which is really, really helpful um, because it means that I can now take this out of the way and not have to worry about tangles. So remember, these three do unpeg from there and you can unpeg them and peg them right back in if it does make it easier for you to, you know, manipulate everything around here. Right, so what needs to happen here I'm going to do this off camera because I can't do it one-handed because it's a pain in the ass. This circuit board needs to fit in between this groove and this groove right here. And this, at the same time, like this hole needs to go into that peg and the whole thing needs to fit together whilst keeping all this inside this wall here. So this orange one needs to be in the same place as this multicolored one here. I would show on camera, but it's an absolute pain in the ass, and it really requires two hands, to be honest. So I'll show what it looks like afterwards. Right, so after a good few seconds, because due to the paint thickening up the peg slightly, it's a little bit tighter. Now what we need to do is crack out the middle put and start filling in some screw holes because it's gonna be a lot easier to get them done when it's in this state. Uh, this one in particular uh, is visible when we put when you fully assemble the rifle, so we wanna get that one done. This one as well will be easier to get access to, so we do this one now, it's just gonna be a lot easier. But as you can see, it is already looking really nice. And I've already flipped it over to have a look at the other side, and it looks fucking amazing. So I'm going to crack out the middle put, get mixing, fill in these screw holes, and I will show you what it looks like afterwards. Right, so these are the screw holes that I've done. This one here, that one, did some on the handle, and these three here. These three, this one and this one are the ones you want to do before putting the shroud piece on. Just makes it a lot easier. Now, yes, it is a little messy. We're going to sand those over and then we're going to paint them. We're going to mask off the surrounding area once we sand them and just make it all blend in. So the next step is finally put the shroud on. And then do the other screws here except this middle one. This middle one is the battery compartment. You do not want to do this. Otherwise, you're going to have problems. And... Yeah, it's, abs it's looking absolutely fucking amazing, isn't it? Um, you will as well want to do the pump ones. And when you do, the, there's one right at the front. You do want to put the pump a little bit back so that you can access this one right here. So I'll screw this in, I'll get it done, and I'll show you what we have. Now, I've made more milliput put than I needed for the filling the screw holes because even though that's all there and done and it looks like a polka dot mess... We have to tackle this this bit because it looks great at first but that that's not accurate so we're going to take this out fill this up all along here and then when the clay is hardened we're going to sand it all off and then we're going to prime it and paint it and uh, we're also going to sand away the copy right there because i was an idiot and forgot to do that so let's get on with that okay so with the screw holes all sanded up and flush you can now go ahead and paint it just remember to leave this one and always mask off the surrounding areas you don't you know you want to only have to redo as little of this as possible so you know just mask off all the areas everything you don't really want to end up making any mistakes especially this late in the game the magazine is also sanded off we do have a few more things to take care of first there is the bottom in our magazine because this does actually have some detail on it then there is this this gapping right here is not actually accurate. These are filled in so that they are flush with this and also flush with this. So basically it will be like that. Um, so you do need to mix up some more milliput, put it in there, let it harden and sand it off as well as doing the underside, which I'll show in a second. But there is also the barrel, because if you still want this thing to fire the nerf darts out of it, you're going to need to do some work with the barrel. Now, um, the problem is, as you can see, I've already shortened it, but if we just go ahead and paint this black, it's going to stick out still like a sore thumb because these are actually meant to be completely see-through all the way around. So what I recommend doing is getting a knife and scoring like that on both sides. Now, I've already done all of these and, well, you know, like that. So start from the top with the point, 
work your way down so you can't really see so start at the top go to the bottom and then do the underside now once that is done on both sides on all of them you can then remove it now i'm not going to i'm not sure how well this is going to turn up on camera and uh, but as you can see they're turning out fairly well now you want to drill at the bottom of all these except that one to so drill all these and then cut them out on both sides and then this piece is going to come out once that is done you might want to consider spraying the inside of the barrel just uh, up to that point, just as much as so, just as up to that point, just as much as the paint will go. Because then, when you put it back in, it'll be black and it will, you know, look like that, essentially. Except it will have this little bit in there, so it won't just be a simple case of hollow, you know, and uh, it will look a bit better. And then we also have the magazine. Now, this actually does have some detail. I did see um, on one tutorial uh, or a video about a custom one that there is actually a 3D printed add-on for this which has screen accurate uh, detail. Um, I'm not not going to get that because, well, I'm sculpting this to match it so that it's all flush with the gun, as you can see. But you'd have to unscrew this piece and don't really want spare pieces lying around. So... You need to get some more millet, put, put it on the bottom of this, make sure it is as smooth and flat as possible. I mean, you're going to be sanding it anyway, you know, to really make it look good. But you want the details to look exactly like this. I'll show the picture for a few seconds so you can screenshot it and then, you know, you've got that for your reference. So with the tube now done, I've sprayed it all inside black and I've sanded off the outside and I've already primed it with the pen. All you need to do is just put glue around these edges, including the front one, and then slide it into place like so. And once you've sanded off the magazine, sculpted in the details like so, painted it and sanded off that front area of the gun and uh, hand painting it, if you like me, just to, you know, finish it all off. You have yourself the Nerf Limited M41A Pulse Rifle in all of its glory. A true centerpiece to any alien's display. And that, my friends, is how you get yourself a fucking pulse rifle. I am not going to lie. I am really really glad that the nerf limited team decided to make this as part of their collection um it is a dream come true as an aliens fan after a many many years to finally have a proper m41a pulse rifle even if it's not perfect even if we had to do modding to get all the working parts even if we had to do a load of work to get it looking like it was straight out of the screen the results speak for themselves and they are worth it. They are absolutely worth it. And to top it all off, you get sound effects with it. How freaking cool is that? And the box as well. The box and the gun. The ultimate centerpiece to any Aliens collection. And get a load of this for detail. The box has a Whaling Yutani barcode on it. How freaking sick is that? How friggin' cool is that? Now, I do hope this tutorial has been of major help to you guys. And I apologise that it has taken as long as it has. Um, you know, the video is not is pretty much an hour long. But look at it this way. What is been an hour for you watching me piss about with this thing has been four days of, of pissing about with this thing for me. That's right. I condensed four days of work into an hour of footage. <laughs> It's only, real, it's only when you said it out loud that it hits you like a, like a baseball bat in the face. That being said, I highly recommend you get one of these. Even though they are limited edition, they do pop up on eBay very regularly. And they're not that expensive. They are usually around 200 which is double the original retail price, which is great. Um, even at 200 I still think it's a fair price. Uh, and it's definitely much more affordable than the Airsoft version. 
uh, and a lot more common. Like I said, these things do pop up regularly enough on eBay. If you are an Aliens fan, get yourself one. You owe it to yourself to get a pulse rifle, unless you have an, a, you know, the airsoft one already. But if you don't have a pulse rifle of any means, get the Nerf one. It is absolutely fantastic. I cannot tell you how good this thing is. So, I hope this tutorial has been what it's needed to be, along with all the other tutorials on YouTube. And with that, my friends, stay frosty and alert. We can't afford to let one of those bastards in here. And with that, I'll see you all in the next video. Stay frosty.